Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am making cake pops. All right, so you might have noticed I have 5,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much for subscribing and watching and getting to know me and commenting and just like this community has just completely blown my mind, you guys. I am so, so excited to have reached this milestone. I've been on YouTube for two and a half years now, so I feel like I've tried really, really hard to get this thing going, but it couldn't be here without all of you. So thank you so, so much. I thought this was the perfect occasion to celebrate with some cake pops. Um, I have had them, like, usually at, like, birthday parties and stuff like that. I always think they're, like, a really clever way to eat cake, especially if you have children. So I thought... Let's do it, let's make some fancy cake pops and celebrate together. The first thing I did was just make a box cake. This one is from Aldi. Of course, I always get my ingredients from Aldi and I just follow the directions on the box. I chose a yellow cake, but you could do whatever kind of cake. If you wanna make a cake from scratch, dude, you can totally do it, but I'm not about to. So I waited till it was really like nice and cool and I just flipped it into a bowl. And then using a spoon, I pretty much just broke it up by like stabbing it and stirring it around until it got into like teeny tiny crumblies. The tinier the crumbly, the smoother the um, cake pop is going to be. So I made sure to take any sort of like crispy edges from like the corners or the bottom. I like took those out just in case like it got stuck in a ball, I didn't want it to be like lumpy, I guess. Once it was all good and crumbly, I add some of this vanilla frosting. Um, I did not measure this. I put a scoop in, I stirred it up, and I just added another little scoop until it made like a dough. I would say overall between the two separate times I threw scoops in, I would say there's probably maybe half a cup to maybe three quarters of a cup total. Um, I didn't use that much. It doesn't take that much frosting. The goal is to get it like a sticky dough and you'll just like kind of know when you're there. Um, I think it just depends on the type of cake you use, if it's a real moist cake or you know whatever. I don't think measuring is super important. You can really eyeball this very easily. And now just like what you do if you were like baking cookies, I just took a spoon and scooped out um, a little bit and I'm like just rolling it and trying to make it as much of a ball shape as I can. And I'm going to do that with the entire thing. And now I'm going to pop these into the freezer for a few minutes. I just wanted to, I actually freeze or refrigerate everything between every step just so that they stay together. The two brands I'm using to coat them are these Wilton Candy Melts and also a brand called Candy Quick for the chocolate. So I'm going to start with the white chocolate. I actually had a hard time with this. Uh, it seemed really thick all the time. This I think was my third attempt when I finally got it to be like thin enough. I tried to actually add food coloring to it and it seized up right away. It just was not cooperating for me. Um, but I got these sticks on Amazon. You can also get sticks like at the craft store, like Joann's and Michael's and Hobby Lobby have them. But I will link all the things I got on Amazon down below. And I'm just dunking the stick into the melted candy melts and then I'm sticking it into the ball. I'm gonna pop these back into my freezer for a few minutes while I get some more of the candy melts done. I just really <laughs> was not happy with the candy melt, if you haven't guessed already. Super thick. My first few attempts did not go well. I lost a ball inside there. Um, I had just a hard time making it look smooth. The melts were just really, really thick and I tried multiple times to try to get it thinner than this and it just would seize up on me every time. So I did my best. I do think they actually turned out really pretty once I kind of got the hang of it. It might just be something that if you have more experience working with the candy melts, you might know better how to do this. Um, so maybe for a novice, I would try a different like brand, like a different candy coating. Um, but eventually we got that working fine. 
For this first batch of these white cake pops, I decided to drizzle some chocolate. Um, this is the Candy Quick uh, version of the melts. And I just put it in a little Ziploc bag and cut the corner off and did little stripes. I think like it looks pretty classic and pretty professional without being difficult at all. Okay, I know this is super weird, but I only had that one little piece of styrofoam to stick my cake pops in. So I really had to look around my house and improvise. And my kids have this huge bag full of all the Play-Doh that they mix together into this weird purple brown ball. And so I thought, you know what? I could probably put Play-Doh in a bowl and stick these cake pops inside of it. So whether you're using Play-Doh or styrofoam, you know, just, just make it work. <laughs> So these ones I decided to do with sprinkles and I had to do them individually because the um, candy melts dry really, really quickly. And then I decided to do the rest of them in this chocolate. The candy quick was so smooth and so thin, it was so easy to dunk these in and coat them. Um, I did have to spend a little bit more time sort of letting them drip down. Some of them dripped onto the stick a little bit just because the chocolate was so much thinner. Um, but it definitely was way easier to work with, and I would highly recommend using Candy Quick. For these ones, I've got these really adorable edible stars. I bought these for a birthday cake for Fox like a year ago. Um, so I just had those in the cupboard, and I thought they'd look super cool. And then for the rest of them, I'm doing sort of an inverse on uh, the ones I did earlier, and I'm doing a white chocolate drizzle on top. You guys, I am so flippin' proud of these. I think they look super professional. As I was going, I wasn't super confident, but they really turned out good. And even to add that little extra professional flair, I got these little wrappers on Amazon that are the perfect little cake pop size so that they'll stay fresh and that they'll look really cute. These would be so easy to take to, I don't know, I wanna say like a school, a bake sale but we all know that that's not a thing that's happening currently for most people um but still i think that they turned out so so cute i would love receiving one of these in a goodie bag or at a wedding and my kids really loved them too which of course is the ultimate test all right you guys i am done with all of my beautiful cake pops um there was a bit of a learning curve um, a couple at the beginning looked super wonky, but as I got going, I really kind of figured it out. I decided I definitely preferred the Candy Quick brand of the chocolate um, over the like melts, the Wilton melts. Those, I had a really hard time getting it to be really like smooth. It kept seizing up on me. I had a really hard time with the white chocolate. I would definitely go with the Candy Quick brand. They do make white chocolate too. I would definitely go with Candy Quick next time. The uh, chocolate ones were way, way easier. But I think these cake pops would be so cute at a birthday party or a wedding shower or a baby shower or for any reason. I think it's definitely something fun and as I was going, I thought of all the different creative like colors and sprinkles and all sorts of stuff that you know you can make. Mm, oh my God. They're so, so good. Mmm. This is a win. Alright, you guys. That's it for this video. I hope I inspired you to maybe try a little cake popping. Um, I had a really good time. And thank you again for celebrating with me, reaching my 5,000 subscribers. I really appreciate each and every one of you. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye! Mmm. Oh yeah, that's good.